Hello guys, welcome back to uh, our Thursday lecture. And sorry for the delay, it's now Saturday. But anyways, so uh, we're gonna continue in this lecture our uh, you know discussion about transistor amplifier, is a basic application for transistor circuits. Okay, but first we're gonna recap what we have taken so far. So uh, we said that <laughs> for an amplifier circuit like this, one for example here, okay, uh, there is what's called voltage gain, which is of V output uh, divided by V input. And this is very important characteristic of the amplifier circuits. And the higher, the better, of course. This is the basic function of it, okay? We also said that these circuits has both AC and DC signals at the same time, which complicates the analysis. But we, I will, I will show you a solution maybe in this lecture, how to, uh, you know, differentiate both worlds, and you know, deal with each signal, uh, you know, uh, in a separate from the other signal. Uh, and we said that, or we did use actually that, that the voltage gain AV is actually equal to minus IC over VTRC. And it's heavily dependent, of course, on the circuit parameters RC, the resistance. So the choice of this resistance is very important. The higher, the better. Okay. Uh, also, the choice of the operating point is also important. IC. Okay. And also, again, the higher, the better. Also, again, remember that there might be a distortion, and you should choose your Q point uh, in a proper way, somehow in the middle range of the active region, so you have a maximum swing. And when we say you should choose it in the middle way of the active region, that means that you are putting a restriction on IC. So you cannot just increase IC, you know, uh, and say that we're gonna, we're gonna have a good amplification. No, because you may have a distortion at the same time, okay? Good. Another term that I didn't, uh, you know, cover, although it's just based on uh, the amplification, you know, uh, criteria here or equation here, which is called transconductance. Remember, we did this, uh, or we did use this uh, equation uh, or, you know, yeah, equation for AV based on the transfer characteristics, okay? Uh, and it's actually equal to, if we go back to the original equation of it, it's D VCE by D VDE, or D out by V input. Okay. So let's do it in a better way. So it's a transfer characteristic, something relates the output to the input. Usually the output for many transistor circuits is based in is, is VCE or near the, is the collector terminal and the input is uh, near the base terminal. The transconductance is basically IC over VT, this term. This is a transconductance, GM. And why is he call it conductance? Because it's I over V. It's a conductance, not a resistance. And the I over V is basically uh, O minus one. It is the opposite of the resistance. Okay, and why is it, it's, it's a trans? Because it's something based on the transfer characteristics, something between uh, VCE, the output and the input VD. And this is a very important parameter that we're gonna see and you know, for each transistor circuit amplifier that we're gonna uh, solve, we're gonna deduce uh, in the early stages GM all the time. Finally, we also discussed uh, how to deal with, uh, with EC or how to differentiate EC from DC. And we said that <laughs> we're gonna use capacitors because capacitors can, can isolate DC from AC signals. And we have here uh, an example, you know, you have here at the input uh, a DC and superimposed on it uh, an AC signal. 
and uh, the voltage after the capacitor will be just the AC signals, the AC signal. Okay, assuming that the frequency is uh, relatively high. Okay, good. Now let's now continue the, uh, the amplifier circuits using BGT transistors. And we're gonna discuss first the amplifier circuit characterizations. What is or what are the uh, characteristics of the amplifier, of any amplifier, upon which we can say this amplifier is good or bad? That's very important questions. The question. So here we are answering what are the characteristics of uh, uh, a BGT or any amplifier. That's not only for BG, BGT. Of uh, a transistor amplifier. We're going to answer this now. So let's have, you know, an example for a circuit. I will not solve it. I will just, you know, explain upon it. So an example for a typical transistor amplifier. That's a very big one. Okay, we have here the VCC, we have here RB, we have here RC, and then the input and the output. And I will just draw it as a typical circuit. So we connect the input, which is AC signal. And remember, AC signals, complete AC signals is small letters. The symbol is, is, uh, is a small letter. The subscript is also small letter. Okay, and we will use a capacitor here at the input so the, to isolate the DC from AC. And we have another also a load here, RL. I'm sorry, this is ground and C out. Again, uh, we have basically our application is we have some AC signals that we want to amplify. And we, when, we, um, when we amplify it, we want also it to be AC. So we have to differentiate EC, uh, the EC from DC at the input and also at the output to have a pure EC signals. Okay. And don't worry now for this capacitor, the how to solve the circuit will be very easy for us to solve. Don't worry about that. But let's now, you know, take a look about this uh, example of a circuit amplifier. Let's divide it into pieces. So let's see. We have actually here three parts. We have the input part here. We can call it input part. We have the output part. And basically in between the amplifier itself. So this is the circuit that will amplify, that will amplify the input to the output. So part three, I'm sorry. Will be starting now. And part three here is, uh, I'm sorry, just here is the amplifier itself. So three parts the input part, the amplifier part, and the output part. Good. So we can sim uh, simplify it in that way. That we have some input. This input, by the way, may have you know uh, an input resistance. So let's draw it. Make it make it make it general. So let's have an input resistance here, R I, as well.
internal resistance. Any source has internal resistance. So what are this is the internal resistance of V input, the source V input. This is the input part. Then we have the amplifier. So let's draw it with another color. The amplifier usually symbol, uh, symbolized by this uh, triangular. So this is the amplifier circuit. Then we have the output, the output part. All right. And for now, we just, you know, uh, ignore the capacitors. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> you know, from Thevenin equivalent, you can take any part of this, any two terminal of the circuit and look between these two terminals and you're gonna see an equivalent resistance, right? So for example, between this point and the ground, you can look between these two points and you can basically see an equivalent resistance for the rest or for, for, for the part that you are looking to. So if we look between these two points, just like Sivinum, we're gonna see an equivalent resistance. Let's call it Ri. So we can even draw some details for this simplified circuit as follows, that the input source This is the amplifier circuit. Sees our input. So the amplifier now, I'm gonna draw it as a box. And here is the output. So the input source can see the input resistance of the rest of the circuit, which is basically uh, the input resistance of the amplifier circuit. We can do the same from the output terminals. So we can look also between these two, two, two points, between the ground and this point in here. But what are we going to see? Remember when we look in here, this part, which is part two and the part three has no source. So we only see a resistor. But if we look from these two points, we're gonna see a source and of course equivalent resistance. So there is equivalent resistance. We will call it our output because we are looking from the output terminals and some source. But now let's think what this source should be. It should be basically the amplified signal. So this should be AV, the voltage gain, multiplied by the input. But what the input? Is this guy or the input that actually seen by the amplifier circuit? So this should be, let's, let's call it the input dash. For example, so we have, you know, very new stuff here. So basically, let's you know go it bit by bit again. So if we look between these two terminals, the rest of the circuit, this part, has no sources. So we're gonna see only a resistor or a resistor uh, R7 and also uh, V7, which is zero. So short circuit, good. But if we look between these two points, the rest of the circuit, which is now this part, part two and part one has a source. So you're gonna see a source V7 and also a resistor. 
which we will call our output because it's seen by the output terminals. And if we think more, this source should be the desired amplified output that should go to the load, RL. But what's the input exactly? Is it the same as the input uh, that actually goes into the circuit? No. So you have the source and the source have some internal resistance, RI. So this internal resistance will take some of your voltages, some of your voltage. So the source is VI will be divided by RI. So some part of portion of VI will go here and another portion will go here, which is VI dash. So the source here is VI dash, AV VI dash. Or we can say, let's go it another, in another way. So let's, I will rename all the inputs uh, with this. So let's, using a better, uh, better terminology for it. So let's call it a V signal. And this is R signal. V signal, R signal, V signal, R signal. And this, let's keep this as VI, not VI dash. Okay, so let's do the, the definitions now. So let's write them down so that uh, you know what's exactly is. So RI, so definitions. Number one, RI, this is the input resistance of the amplifier, amplifier circuit. You can say just in between brackets, the resistance seen by the input signal or the input source V signal. We can say so. Number two, what is RO? RO is the output resistance of the amplifier circuit. And just, you know, here, V signal, including its internal resistance. Going back to our output, our output is the output resistance of the amplifier circuit or the resistance seen by the load RL. Okay. Based on that circuit, now we can determine or, you know, characterize. So these are the characteristics of the amplifier. So the characteristics of the, of the amplifier. For any, of any amplifier, number one, RI, number two, RO, number three, AV. The amplification itself, how much amplification you have. And by the way, AV is VI, not V signal. VI, which is the uh, the voltage here. I'm sorry, VO over VI. VO over VI. This is called the the intrinsic. I can I I I call it so. The intrinsic amplification of the circuit. 
there is overall amplification which is V output over V signal. So, the, but this is not a characteristic of the amplifier. The amplifier circuit itself is different from the input circuit, different from the output circuit. It has amplification EV equal to VO over VR. VO is the voltage on the load. VI is the voltage on RI, the input resistance of the amplifier. Okay. Now we can answer the question. What is a good amplifier is? Or what are the, uh, how we can know that uh, the amplifier is good or bad? How we can, you know, compare two amplifiers? Which one is the uh, best? We'll, we will compare them based on these three characteristics. Basically, in very simple terms, good amplifier should have big AV. That's obvious. We do it's amplifier, so it should have, you know, amplification. So AV should be larger. So if you compare two amplifiers and one of them has higher AV than the other, then, you know, this guy is, is the best in that characteristics. But how about RI and RO? Should we uh, have RI very big or very small? Should we have RO very big or very small? Let's start by RO because it's, you know, it's really, it's really uh, easier to understand. Both are easy, but so here, I'm yeah, just uh, to make sure we don't miss anything. So here, AV, VR, okay, good. So here is VO. VO is a voltage on the load, RL. So what is if from this circuit here, VO is equal to AV VI This is a source multiplied by R load over R load plus R O. And from this specific equation, we can say what is the desired value for, for R O. Remember. AVVI is the amplified input. This is actually, you know, the value or the voltage that we're gonna, that we want the load to receive. But now in between we have RO here. So portion of AVVI will go to VRO and the portion will go to RL. So we want RO to be very, very small. Sorry for this. It should restart you now by itself, yeah. So we should, we, we need our O to, to be very small. If it's zero, that's, you know, the ultimate goal. Because if it's zero, all the input, if it's zero, all uh, the output voltage AVVI will go to VO. So, number two, good amplifier should have very small RO. So most of AV VI goes to RL. Very simple terms. Now we go to RI. What is a good value? So this is number one. What is a good value for RI? We go back to our simplified circuit. Again, we have two ultimate goals. Is it infin if, if infinity or zero? Okay. So for RO, for example, we said that if it's infinity, then nothing will go to the output. If it's zero, all the amplified signal will go to the output. 
So we want it to be zero, you know, very small. Of course, you know, you cannot find amplifier with zero output resistance, but we want it to be very small. Now for RI, what happened if RI is equal to zero? If RI is equal to zero, then VI will be equal to zero. So if RI equal to, let's do it, you know, let's see. On the side here. If RI equal to zero, VI will be equal to zero. Nothing will go to the amplifier, basically. So AV, VI, remember, AVVI is the voltage of this source will be equal to zero because nothing to be amplified. Nothing is seen by the amplifier circuit itself, the second part between input and output. So VO is equal to zero. So this is very bad, very bad. Hmm. I don't know why it's behaving like this, but anyways. Now is the second choice. What if R I equal to infinity? Very big. So V I is equal to V signal R I over R I plus R signal. So let's divide uh, the numerator and denominator by I by R I. So this will be equal to V signal, one over one plus uh, R signal over RI, which will be zero. So this will be V signal. So all the input signal, which actually we wanna amplify, goes to the amplifier circuit. So all of it will be amplified, okay? So zero is very bad, nothing will be amplified. We will see zero at the output. If infinity, we will see, you know, uh, a, a perfect amplified version of V signal, the real input signal, okay? Of course, in between, not zero, not, um, uh, not, uh, not, uh, not open circuit, you will see amplification at the output, but it's not, you know, uh, is a perfect amplification because part of the input signal goes to our signal. So if the, uh, if the R, if RI, the input resistance of the amplifier is high enough, this part that goes to the R signal will be smaller. So you will amplify most of the input signal. So number three, good amplifier should have very high RI. Okay. So again, RO should be very small so that all the amplified signal will go to our load. This is the load that we wanna you know feed with amplified signal. So we don't want anything to go to RO. We desire this. So we want it to be very small. Again, our input signal here is the input that we wanna amplify. So we wanna uh, uh, amplify, we, we desire to amplify all that signal. Again. Sorry for this guys. So we wanna amplify all that signal, but only, but, because of the internal resistance, some of this V signal will go to the internal resistance. So to minimize that portion, we increase uh, RI very much. If we increase RI uh, too much, then most of our V signal will go to RI and VI will be approximately equal to V signal. So we will amplify most of the input signal, which is a good thing. Okay. Okay. And that's what differentiate an amplifier from another amplifier. These three uh, parameters. Good amplification means high amplification. Uh, good amplification means high input resistance. 
good amplification means small output resistance. Okay. Now we go and see how to analyze and amplify our circuit. Remember, it's a complicated circuit because you have AC and DC now. Okay. So what we're gonna do? So we're gonna ask ourselves some questions. Some questions here that you need, we need to answer. Number one, how to deal with AC and DC? How to deal with Uh, remember, we have AC, superimposed DC. Number two, how to deal with the capacitors? This is something new now. We didn't have, we don't have capacitors. We didn't see capacitors before. Now we have. Number three. If we dealt with all of this, these two questions, okay, we need uh, to characterize the amplifier to determine if it's good or bad. So for any circuit, we need to know what is our I, what is our O, and what is AV? So analysis, you need to deal with these three questions. How to differentiate EC and DC? How to deal with these capacitors? And after you do this, how to get RI, RO, and AV to judge about your amplification or your circuit if it's a good design or bad design, okay? So let's now see how the analysis will go. So the analysis will go as follows. Oh, I think the, uh, the page is small, so let's amplify it. Oh, it's A3. Okay. So the analysis. Since we have EC and DC, now we will answer question one and question two. So this is answering question one, question two. Since we have EC and DC, we're going to uh, solve the circuit twice. Okay. First, we're gonna solve it as a DC. And we have some criteria to do that, some steps to do that. So, so number one, solve the DC portion or the DC uh, circuit. That means somehow we will ignore the AC stuff. Yes, we will ignore this. How to do that first, cancel all AC sources. If you see any AC source, which is basically the inputs that you wanna amplify, you're gonna cancel it. How to cancel a source? This is basically depend on the source type itself. So if the AC source is voltage source, which is most of the cases, how to cancel a voltage source? Voltage source may make a voltage difference. So cancel the voltage difference, make it short. Short circuit. If it's a current source, how to cancel a current source? Make it open, so the current will be zero. Open circuit. But again, most of the time you would see uh, uh, voltage sources. Any capacitor will be open. So in DC, any capacitor is open, open circuit. So 
So then after you, you know, you remove basically all the AC stuff, you will have a circuit just like the circuits that you just solved in your homework and, you know, all the circuits that I analyzed so far in previous lectures. Very normal circuit. So we're going to find the Q point. So number three is the, is the next step. Solve the circuit, the DC circuit, because it's now a, a pure DC circuit after removing the capacitors and uh, the AC sources. And basically, in solving that, we determine the Q point, which is IC, IB, and uh, the operation region. So we should also determine VBC. It should be less than 0.4 because we cannot work as an amplifier in saturation or uh, cutoff. So we must ensure that the operating point is in active region. If it's not an active region, that's bad design. It's not amplifier. Okay. Good. Now number two. Solve the AC circuit. Now we're going to look at the circuit as an AC circuit. So we're going to cancel all the DC sources. So cancel. The opposite, all DC sources. Any DC source you, you see, again, voltage source would be open, um, sorry, voltage source uh, short circuit, current source will be open. So voltage source, DC voltage source, market short, DC current source market open or make open. And for this, you're gonna see both. You're gonna see AC uh, because you, you can bias, you know, bias means you, you have a Q point. Okay, you can bias a transistor using voltage sources, constant voltage sources, or uh, a current source. And we're gonna see this. So you can expect both. But for the first one, the first step here, when you solve the uh, the DC, usually when you calculate the AC source, you will find only AC voltage sources. So let's write it down here, AC, AC. Okay, after canceling all DC sources, number two, replace the transistor with its AC small signal equivalent circuit that I will just explain, you know, in five minutes or three minutes. So in AC, we replace the transistor by an equivalent circuit. And we're gonna see this. So in EC part, we remove the symbol of transistor. This, you know, this stuff, we remove the symbol and we put uh, a three-terminal three uh, equivalent circuit that, you know, models a transistor operation in, in EC. We're gonna see these trans, we didn't, we didn't see them yet. We're gonna see them uh, you know, after three minutes or something, okay? After replacing the uh, transistor circuit by its small signal model, the last step is to find, solve the circuit, of course. Now you will have a complete AC circuit. You can solve it easily. And to solve it means find AV, RI, RO, the characteristics of the amplifier. Okay, that's good. Now, what are this new, uh, you know, uh, AC small signal model? Equivalent circuit. 
spot is that. So there is a equivalent circuit for the transistor. We don't need to go into the derivation of how we you know deduce this uh, this uh, uh, these models, but we, we're gonna take them, you know, it's it's easy, but we're gonna take them just to, to not waste our time. Because I will not ask about them. So now what are so to do that we need now the transistor. The only step that is missing now is uh, this part because we don't know what are these small signal equivalent circuits okay so let's uh, see what are these equivalent circuits are so transistor actually bgt because each transistor has its own uh, small signal model so BGT transistor is small signal AC model. And remember from the name here, it's a, a small. So the signal should be small. Uh, but we, get, we, just, we will just cover this, uh, this, this application. The amplifier is an application with very small uh, inputs. You may have relatively high input, but at that time you cannot use these circuits. We'll have some different analysis, but we're not gonna touch that. Because the common case is you have very small inputs that you wanna amplify. So we can still use this uh, circuit. So what are these circuits? Okay. Basically you have two sets and you can use any of them by the way, both are equivalent. But for some circuits, you know, some set will be better, better than the other. So one set, so let's call number one, is this, is these two circuits. Remember we have three terminals. Oh, sorry. Yes. So this is the first set. This is the base, collector emitter. And remember we, got, we are dealing with AC signals here. So everything is small letters. Base, collector, emitter, here is a uh, resistor called R by. This is, by the way, called a uh, hybrid by model. Hybrid by model. Just forget about the naming, you know, just for your information. So there is a resistor called R by, and the voltage across this resistor is called V by. And here you have uh, a current, a voltage dependent current source. Remember when we just started this, you know, series of transistor, we said that uh, to amplify we need a current source, and the transistor can be behave as a current source in active region. And that's why we have here a current source, and the the current is going from uh, I'm sorry, collector to emitter. This is actually IC here. This is actually IB, and here is IE. And here is GM, remember the transconductance in the recap slide, GM V bar. And GM is equal to uh, IC over VT. What is R by? R by is also something uh, you should know. It's VT over IB. And let's see here, this is I capital C capital. This is I capital B capital. So when you solve the uh, Q point in the DC uh, part, after finding IC and IB, you calculate GM and R by to use it afterwards in the AC part. So we're gonna see examples for this. That's good. There is another version of it which is very, very typical, you know, it's very, 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 very similar. And you also can use, and both are just equivalent. Instead of saying it's a voltage dependent console, you can't say it's beta IB. It's exactly the same. You can use either one of those. 
I mean, when you find uh, AV or RI or RO using any, any, any of these two test circuits, you will get the same example, the same, same calculations. I'm sorry. Here is again V by, here is again IB, here is IE, here is IC. And remember, IC is, equal, is actually equal to beta IB, so we didn't change anything. Okay. Good. There is still another version, which is equivalent. And again, you can use any of these two circuits. So the other version is something like this. We'll just replace the locations of uh, the emitter and the base. So the base will be here and down. The collector stays the same place. Here is the emitter. And uh, we have uh, here between collector and base, we have, I'm sorry, we have uh, GM V by again. We have here a resistor. I'm sorry, it's really bad. RE. And RE has a voltage in the, look at the terminals. Negative is, a, is near the emitter and positive near the base, which is V bar. And still GM is IC over VT. And the RE is uh, VT over IE, IE capital. And just equivalent to this, Exactly the same circuit, but this guy will be alpha IE. Remember, this is a collector, this is IC. Remember, <coughs> IC is equal to alpha IE, and alpha is 0.99, you know. So we're still in the same, same, same stuff. Here is the emitter, again, here is RE, same value, and here is V bar. Of course, V by here is not, is not you know, not relevant because we will not just we will not use it. We will use alpha e. Okay, and here is, and where is IE by the way? So let's draw the currents uh, because this is also important because it's a little bit confusing in this. So remember, IB is flowing from uh, the base to the emitter. So, uh, so here is IB. Sorry, uh, yeah, IB should be in that direction. And IE should be from bottom to top. IE again here, from bottom to top. Here is IB. So IC and IB is going to the node and IE is going out of the node. Remember always, always, IE is equal to IC plus IB. So IC here, this is IC, is going to the node. IB is going to the node, into the node, and IE is going out of the node, okay? Now, if you have any circuit that you want to analyze, you can use any of these, all, let's write this in, in red, all these four circuits or models are equivalent. You can use any. But for some circuits, version one is much better than, or you know, you will solve the circuit easily or more easy than version two. <coughs> and for some other circuits, version two will be easier to use than version one. You will solve the circuit, you know, faster using version two. Okay, guys, it is all the information that we need in order to start to analyze uh, transistor circuits. Okay, so let's now start uh, by examples uh, to show how to deal with uh, uh, transistor circuits and how to solve it and getting AV, RI, and RO. Thank you.